Good morning, folks. We've got several things to hit today. We'll cover the last 24 hours of space weather, review the CME forecast from last night, see the big earthquake that struck yesterday, and hit three science news stories as well. We are starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we had 10 more M-class solar flares. Luckily, they were mostly impulsive or confined flaring events, and most came from that southern massive sunspot group which just crossed central heliographic longitudes. You can see that flaring here in the 94 angstrom view which shows x-rays and extreme ultraviolet. Most of the flares indeed came from that south central sunspot group. We're going to hit the protons and the solar wind, but first, a quick review. Early yesterday morning, an X-class solar flare unloaded a strong coronal mass ejection, a CME, and the full halo visible on SOHO coronagraphs indicated that it was heading our way. The Enlil spirals were updated, and as we saw last night, NASA and NOAA are both forecasting an impact for early tomorrow morning, which means the window for impact is between tonight and tomorrow night. We also saw a brand new Enlil model, the Zeus model. It was showing the exact same thing, impact on its way here now. This will not be a kill shot event. It's not big enough and there's no double impact scenario in play. We have preconditioning we'll discuss momentarily, but we should expect geomagnetic storms and strong aurora in the wake of the impact. We're also continuing to take the proton storm now at level 2 and at one point almost hit level 3. We had a resurgence of the geomagnetic storm last night, that's the preconditioning, and it has been due to the arrival of the coronal hole stream. In the solar wind data here you can see the slow rise of the purple line, plasma speed. That is indeed the coronal hole stream we've been expecting. As we await that CME impact in the coming hours, we'll also be watching for more, especially from that huge sunspot group on the south, appears to be the biggest of the solar cycle so far. Off to seismicity, magnitude 6.9 earthquake struck Papua. It initially rang in at 7.0 but was downgraded. So far, luckily, there are no significant reports of fallout in the relatively remote area of the quake. Hopefully, it stays that way. Good paper here on the adaptations of survivors in the migrations in the wake of Toba. This was the closest humans have come to extinction in the last 100,000 years, and anything about it fascinates me tremendously. We have an excellent paper out on magnetic field radiation impact to duckweed. Even the slightest exposure begins to cause significant changes to its structure and processes. It's something we've seen at all scales of the food chain and something to consider as Earth's magnetic field is weakening right now. Lastly, folks, the thunderstorm-induced muon events. Detectors caught an unbelievable surge in those events, implying that the storms are getting more powerful, and they took that jump in just one year. The jump is far too large to be explained by the warming they attempt to use to justify it in the paper. It takes a significant electromagnetic shift to cause what they saw, another step down the line to wild weather shifts we expect from the magnetic Earth changes. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.